Welcome. I'm Peter Call from Neutronics Refrigerant Analysis, and I'm here with Zachary Ziegler. Today, we wanted to bring you some information on our new RI2012 YFP refrigerant analyzer. Boy, that's a mouthful. This is the world's first refrigerant analyzer to do both 134A and 1234 YF, as well as hydrocarbons, R22, air, and unknowns like R125, R32, R40, and other refrigerants that might be out there. Uh, Zach, why don't you tell us why we need a refrigerant analyzer to start with? Well, we need a refrigerant analyzer because there are contaminants out there. People are using hydrocarbons. R40 was detected in 134A systems recently. Yep. And you want to verify the refrigerant in a system or in a tank, a virgin tank refrigerant, is what it's supposed to be before right. you're using that in a, you know, potentially put someone in harm's way. That's right. And of course, once we recover the refrigerant from a vehicle or a system, or in this case a vehicle, that's what this is designed for, that refrigerant's going to mix inside the AC service machine or recovery recycling machine with other refrigerant that's been pulled from other vehicles. So it only takes recovery of contaminated refrigerant from one vehicle to potentially contaminate a whole bunch of others as you recharge them. One of the things that this unit does is, again, meets that SAE 2912 standard. And that's important because it has a USB port on the back. The new SAE J2843 standard for recovery recycling machines for 1234YF require that it, those machines get a good signal from an approved refrigerant analyzer before they're allowed to recover the refrigerant. So if you don't have an internal refrigerant analyzer in that machine, you need to have an external one tethered by USB or uh, microwave or um, whatever, whatever other mental telepathy method you happen to have, as long as, it as, long as, as long as they tie together, to make sure that that machine can then recover the refrigerant. So, Zach, why don't we get into what's included with the Ultima ID 1234YF kit? Perfect. Well, this is the unit. This is the hard shell case we have with every unit. Let's open it up. And the first thing you want to note besides the unit is the manual. Read through the manual, understand the unit, understand how it operates. It's very important. Yep. And we've got a bag here with all kinds of goodies. Zach's going to get into that bag while he's doing that. I'm going to show you that the unit comes with a tank adapter for a 134A tank. So you can actually test your Virgin 134A tanks after you purchase them, but before you pay for them to make sure you're getting what you think you're getting. Also has the AC power supply. The AC power supply is important because we never included one of these in prior units. The, uh, the unit itself has an internal rechargeable battery that lasts some ridiculous number of tests. I think we stopped at like 225 and it was still going and going like the Energizer Bunny. Uh, but this power supply is not only going to power the unit, it's going to charge the battery. And of course, we've got the power cable here that will allow us to, uh, to run this continuously and charge it overnight or whatever, whatever else uh, we might choose to do, depending on how many uses it's going to get in a given day. Zach, what else we got there? In addition, we have the YF hose assembly for connecting to low side trader valve on the vehicle and the 134A for the low side trader valve on the vehicle. Yep. Hose assembly. Yep. We have the USB cord, which is for integration and connect connection with a recovery recycling machine. And we've got a tank adapter for 1234YF. And the most important thing, we've got spare flow restrictors. So we want to talk a little bit about these because this is kind of a new feature for refrigerant analyzers for us. In prior refrigerant analyzers, we had a hose that connected directly to a tank or a system at roughly 70 PSI in ambient temperature. And so if there was any oil from a system that might have been overfilled with oil, or that was malfunctioning, that oil might travel right up that hose at 70 PSI and get into the unit. And while we have a filter here, that filter would capture oil, but that oil would be stuck inside the pressure regulator inside and so forth and eventually could cause problems. Well, that was the biggest customer complaint we ever received is I got oil in it, I don't know how it happened. So we went and addressed that with the flow restrictor. Flow restrictor is gonna reduce the pressure right at the coupler to about 10 PSI or so. So any oil or liquid that tries to come up the hose is going to migrate very slowly through the flow restrictor. And you can run, oh, I don't know, it's about 
one inch of oil on every test if you had a really oil laden sample of refrigerant that you were testing. So before that oil ever got to the refrigerant analyzer, you'd get error after error here saying, hey, we're not getting a good sample. So we provide replacement flow restrictors for you. And these flow restrictors are available as a standard spare part. They're not expensive, not expensive like a full hose assembly, and will keep you from damaging your refrigerant analyzer. It's definitely a great add on great yeah. engineering on our part. Yeah, well, not our part, but somebody else here in the building uh, because you know we just sell stuff. Um, we're going to run off to the lab. We want to run some tests for you on some 134A that's contaminated with R40. Uh, which is kind of why we have to do it in the lab under a fume hood because uh, stuff's really dangerous and we're not allowed to run it anywhere else. Also going to do some YF while we're there just because we're already set up there. Sure. And then we'll come back and we'll close out the video, um, tell them where they can get more information. Perfect. And uh, so if you grab your, I've got my Frogman goggles here, my favorite Frogman goggles. Zach has his super sexy uh, regular safety glasses and some gloves. So. Let's head off to the lab and we'll see you in a little bit. Perfect. So here we are, we're in the lab and under the fume hood here, which is where we have to run this test, we have some 1234YF and we have some 134A contaminated with about 5% R40. We're gonna run some tests. We're actually gonna not talk through this and we'll show you the end result when we're all done. And then we'll go back to the studio and finish up. Zach, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Zach, can you turn the fume hood on for me, please? Will do. Always remember glasses and gloves when working with refrigerants. Okay. So now that we've seen the 134A test where it was contaminated with R40 and the test results, we'll test some 1234YF. We'll do it here under the fume hood because we're already set up in this environment, but normally for 1234YF or pure 134A we wouldn't concern ourselves. Zach, can you get us started? Sure. the lab and Peter draw what? glasses what draw glasses thank you gotcha um, you saw us run the tests you saw the printouts um, and uh, where we identified the unknown in 1230 or 134a Correct. and uh, some pure 1234yf um, once again the RI 2012 YFP refrigerant analyzer, the first ever certified to SAEJ 2912 
for 134A and 1234YF. Uh, shortly coming up on the screen, I guess they'll find out how to contact us as our Correct, editor yeah. does all that good editing and producing and all that good stuff. Fantastic um, stuff. I'm Peter Call. This is Zachary Ziegler. want to thank you for your kind attention and uh, keep tuned to our channel. We'll be back with more.